Within the background at the left, the video in slow motion that almost everybody saw. On the right, the model we are going to load with torsion ourselves. We'll start with a quick recap of what the earthquake did to the building. The initial failure, the collapse sequence, and where things started to go wrong. Then, we'll take a closer look at the visible damage, the cracking patterns in the columns and structural walls. Finally, using a small scale demo model, we'll apply torsion to see if this failure mode can be reproduced and if our assumptions hold up. In case you wish to see the FEM model I made of the skyscraper, I added a link in the description. So on top of the compression loads that were already there, the video shows the additional earthquake loads, which shows the loads that are generated out of an earthquake when the core is not in the center of mass. For people who didn't see my other video, now on the screen clarifies how torsion develops. This big bottle represents the concrete core. This small bottle stands for the center of mass, and the cardboard on top represents the floor slab. Now watch what happens when I apply a horizontal movement. You can see the floor starts to twist and shift. This is torsion in action. The floor isn't just sliding, it's dancing around the mass, because the mass and the core are not aligned. This twisting motion transfers stress back into the core. Now let's see how some cracks are built up quickly after each other before we go to our test model. Image 1, Compression Cracks. In this first image, we see vertical compression cracks forming along the length of the column. These cracks are caused by high vertical loads. The concrete splits along the reinforcement, a typical sign of compressive overload. In the second image, the first shear failure occurs at the corner column. This means that the core is out already. Once that happens, the middle columns are suddenly forced to carry more load. The stress shifts inward, increasing the compression on those elements. Image 3, Combined Failure. In the third image, we see that the remaining columns fail as well. The collapse happens quickly. Shear, torsion, and compression are all still acting on the structure. These combined forces push the system to total failure. All right, now let's build the model. The preparation of the column, placing the rebar and setting the mold. In the next step, we'll pour C2025 concrete into the formwork to complete the test column. The result after three days is a reinforced concrete column, properly cured and ready for the torsion test. Now we move on to the core. The mold forms the vertical walls of the core, just one floor high, with an open space in the middle. The reinforcement is placed inside the walls, including vertical rebars and horizontal ties. Now it's time to pour the concrete. Once poured, we vibrate the concrete to remove air pockets and ensure proper compaction. This step is essential for strength. And here's the final setup. The concrete core is now fully cured and connected to the floor elements, which in turn link the core to the column. This allows us to simulate how torsion transfers through the structure, just like in a real building. And the last shot we also saw at the beginning, the structure is ready to be tested under torsion. Let's see how it holds up. Right away, it's clear that the column responds with much more movement than the core. Small cracks begin to appear near the upper middle section of the core, the first signs of failure. The movement continues. As the deformation progresses, vertical cracking appears in the top right corner of the core, at the connection point with the floor. This suggests localized stress concentration under torsion. The movement still continues. Concrete begins to fall away, right at the connection between the floor and the core. This is the same zone where our FM model showed the highest stress concentration. Let's speed it up. We can see the core completely losing its structural function. Now imagine adding compression and shear forces on top of this. Failure would happen even faster. As damage progresses, the core starts behaving like a U-shaped structure, which has very limited resistance to torsional shear loads. Looking at the column, we can see damage at both ends. But since the connection to the floor wasn't properly fixed, the column is still somewhat intact. Now let's fix the top and bottom of the column and apply torsional loads. At the base, we immediately see shear cracks forming, just like in the first column that failed in the Bangkok skyscraper collapse. 
The torsional shear creates a series of V-shaped cracks rising along the column. Watch how it collapses. And again, if we added compression, the failure would happen even faster. By the way, please subscribe for more. But for now, what do you think? Does this resemble the moment the Bangkok skyscraper finally collapsed? Did this test come close to what might have happened in reality? The lower cracks in the column closely match the pattern we saw in the front columns of the actual structure, and the stress zones in the core align with our FEM simulation. Now imagine adding shear forces, like the bottle test, combined with millions of kilos of compression. It's easy to see how that could lead to a full pancake collapse. And of course, knowing that the material quality was poor, that's a complete no-go for this kind of design.